How's it going, y'all? So if you're building a software application and your goal is to make some money from that application, chances are you'll need to give users the opportunity to actually pay for your application. And that's currently where I'm at with the software that I am building. If you're new around here, it's called Dinnerbee, and it is a platform for roommates, couples, or really anybody who lives together to plan their meals throughout the week. That's the elevator pitch for Dinnerbee, and I'm at a point in my development journey where I am uh, pretty much at an MVP. I am a few weeks out from my beta, which is really exciting, but I have this lingering piece, which is I need a, a way for users to actually pay for the software and then provision access to them once they have done so. There were definitely a few different decisions that I had to make along the way as I was designing the payment and user onboarding flow. And I just wanted to share those with y'all in case you're looking for inspiration on how to accept payments inside of your application or just looking for a way to do it. There are definitely a ton of ways to do it. So this is just how I am doing it for this application. And I wanna talk about three different things in this video. The first is gonna be a high level diagram and overview of my user onboarding flow, which includes you know account creation, actually paying for the software and then provisioning access afterwards. And the technologies that I use for this uh, at a very high level are Stripe for the actual payment processing piece of it, um, React on the front end and Java Spring Boot on the back end. The second thing that I'll be going over is actually hopping into Dinnerbee so you can see all of this live. Uh, it is all currently functioning, which is really awesome. And I wanted to show that to y'all. And finally, the third thing that I wanna talk about is pretty much why I chose Stripe as a solo SaaS founder, some of the benefits that it gives me, and some of the considerations that I took while choosing Stripe. So yeah, I hope you all will be able to take something valuable away from this video, but I'm gonna start off by hopping into my iPad so I can do a diagram and overview of how this whole flow works. Alrighty, so I want to give a high level overview of the kind of payments and user onboarding for Dinnerbee. And I just want to diagram this and then I'll shop into dinner B itself and, and show the entire process there as well. But so everything starts off with a potential user. And so this potential user for whatever reason, for whatever marketing effort has landed on the dinner B website and on the landing page, on the sales page, there are a number of buttons that will redirect over to the next stage in the process. So these buttons will say something like get started or sign up now. Once a potential user clicks on one of those buttons, they will be redirected over to this account creation page. So this is a very standard account creation page, you know, just ask for things like your name, uh, email, password, those kinds of things. And I wanna talk about real quick why I want this account creation to be the first step of the onboarding flow. So essentially what could potentially happen is uh, we worked very hard to get this user. I'm just gonna switch colors here real quick. We worked really hard to get this guy or girl to come over here to our website. And you know we worked even harder with the content on the sales page to get them to actually want to sign up for an account. Now, what could potentially happen is they go over after they create their account to the next phase of the process, which is this pricing tab and this has a, a couple different options for them uh, to actually purchase dinner B but what happens if they create their account and then they come over to the pricing page and then they leave well essentially all of this work that we did to get them from here to here to here to the pricing page uh, it, it's like all moot they didn't actually make a purchase it's really unfortunate but the fact that we have the account creation step before the pricing page um, ensures that Yes, we worked really hard to get them over to this stage and, and they didn't make a purchase yet. But if we have an account, we have their email and we can continue marketing to them uh, until they are potentially ready to make that purchase. Uh, another important reason for having the account creation up front is uh, when a user creates their account, so they you know, actually have the button that creates the account, uh, they are assigned a status. And that status is referring to their payment or like if their account is actually active. And this is how I'm provisioning access to all the features of Dinnerbee is so initially when they create their account, uh, this, this status is false, they don't have access to anything. But later down the line, I'll kind of show how this status eventually gets set to true so that they can have access to everything in the platform. 
For the third and final reason why this is really important for a user to have an account before they actually purchase anything is I'm using uh, email as a unique identifier to actually link uh, this user to uh, an eventual Stripe user. And then again, this whole like provisioning of access to them uh, is all based off of email. So like I kind of have to have a user have their account first. I could do it the other way around, but I think this whole flow makes a whole lot more sense from my perspective as a developer and also as a user. It's a pretty seamless process. So let's get on to the next uh, part of this. So once they've created their account, they are redirected over this pricing page. We have two different options. So option one is a one-time $37 payment. And option two is slightly less. Uh, this is $5 a month. Excuse my terrible handwriting. The reason that I have these two different pricing options is I really wanted to make this as simple as possible for my potential users. So uh, they come over to the pricing page and like I don't want them to be confused in any way. Both of the options have the same exact um, features. So they, there's not like additional features. If you do the $37 plan, this will all be exactly the same. And the reason for this is I really just want it to be as simple as possible for the user. They have to make like one really quick decision and it's easy and all the information is right there for them. They don't have to sift through, you know, oh, I have access to this feature or I don't have access to this feature with this plan. And all that stuff is just really confusing and can bog down the process. So like I said, just wanted to keep this as simple as possible. You'll also notice that there is no free trial. I'm not interested in doing free trial. They don't convert super well. Uh, you end up with a ton of data that is just gone forever once the user never comes back. Uh, you could potentially have um, malicious users that come into your system and try and break things. And so really, I want to mitigate all of that and just only have these paid plans. I'll probably play with these prices as time goes on. Um, and I gather some data on what actually makes sense, if these prices are converting or not. Um, my thought for the um, one-time payment, and this one is going to be like the highlighted option. This will be uh, what I have as the most popular option because uh, a user would have to stay on the dinner be platform for like over seven months um, for this to actually make more money than the one-time payment. And, you know, it's possible that users want to stay on for that long, but this is SaaS. There is customer churn and you have to take those things into account. So I do think that the one-time payment will be the most effective strategy for me. Um, but again, I'll let the data decide that going forward. Okay, gonna switch colors again. So once they have selected a pricing plan that suits them best, they are redirected over to a, an embedded Stripe checkout. So this is really cool. This allows you to have a Stripe checkout directly on your domain. It doesn't like direct over to stripe.com. Um, it's all part of your domain. And so, for example, if they clicked on the $37 uh, plan, then they would see that price, they would see all the things that they would get with that, and then they would have uh, an option to fill out their credit card de details and any other user information and user details. What's really cool is I can have the email that was created from this step be auto-populated over here so that I can automatically link this and this once a user actually buys. So let's talk about that. When a user actually hits the buy button, uh, this is when the process of setting this to true starts to kick off. And this is kind of behind the scenes. So I will do something like this. So Stripe allows you to listen to events that happen within their platform. So essentially, uh, there is going to be this payment successful event that we can listen to. And so I have an endpoint on my server that is listening for that event. And it can say, uh, hey, this person, whoever just created this account, it's like this person uh, who created their account and then they purchased Dinner B and maybe they did the $37 plan, uh, all of that information will be sent to my server and then I can just say, hey, find that user in my database. Instead of just having this as false, let's set this to true. And now we have successfully essentially provisioned access to Dinner B. Whenever they're redirected over to like the, the homepage, uh, the dashboard, they'll actually be able to see the content uh, that they are able to see. So that's really cool. Uh, this is all through like Stripe web hooks. Dang, my handwriting is terrible. Um, but this is, yeah, all through Stripe webhooks. And like I said, this is kind of happening behind the scenes. But what the user is actually seeing is a redirect once they hit this buy button over to a thank you page. And this just says, thank you. Uh, we love you. And thanks so much. This will have a button um, that redirects them over to the actual Dinner B platform. 
Uh, so they can say, hey, uh, there might be a confirmation email that comes to that email. Um, but if you click on this button, we'll take you right away over to your dashboard. Okay, so that is the whole diagram and flow at a high level. So now I actually want to jump into the Dinnerbee platform so you can see all of this in real life. And I have a whole video that kind of shows this entire landing and sales page. I'll link that somewhere. Um, but essentially what I'm caring about here is these links that I was talking about before that allow you to start now and kick off this whole onboarding process. So let's click on one of these. Let's get started now. And as you can see, we are directed over to the account creation uh, that I was talking about before. So let's fill in some information here. Keep note of this email because this will kind of be passed down through this entire account creation step and, and payment flow. So that's really, uh, really cool. So once a user is ready and they sign up, we can see that email being propagated over to the next step. We'll probably add some more information here, but for now I just wanted to see that it is actually passing through. Like I said, I have those two options, the one-time payment, which is the, the most popular one. I want that one to be highlighted. Ideally, I would like folks to purchase this one more than the monthly one. But if Jon Snow is ready to purchase the one-time payment, they can click on the purchase. And like I said before, this is taking you over to an embedded Stripe checkout, which is really cool. Uh, like I said, this is on your own domain um, and it's like a, an embeddable component that you can have. So for example, I'm using React and I can just have that component um, be rendered right now, which is awesome. As I mentioned before, this email is propagated over here and they're actually not able to edit it because this is very important. This is a unique identifier for me and actually linking this purchase to that account that was just created. I'll talk about this in a little bit, but Stripe is awesome for creating like test data. So essentially they'll give you test credit cards that you can use to test out your entire payment flow. And once Jon Snow is ready to purchase, they're able to hit pay. We can see that that was successful and it redirects us back over to a thank you page saying, hey, your purchase was completed successfully. We'll send a confirmation email over to that email that we had before. So this is the final piece in this three-step process and at this point they are able to go and access the dinner platform which is awesome it takes them directly over to their dashboard where they can start using you know create recipes creating their calendars and setting everything up um, so yep yeah, this is the entire flow and honestly i'm very happy with how it has turned out so far Alrighty, so that will wrap up the demo i hope you found that interesting or just sparked some ideas of your own for how you'll do your user onboarding and if you have any comments or questions about it definitely leave them down below and i'll be happy to check them out but I wanted to end this video now just talking about why I chose Stripe. There are definitely a lot of payment processors that you can choose from, but my clear and obvious choice every time I need to set up a payment processing integration, especially as a solo SaaS founder, is always going to be Stripe. So here's why. First and foremost, Stripe has amazing documentation. Out of any of the third-party vendors that I've ever worked with, whether it be a cloud provider or an email integration or just any kind of third party, Stripe has by far and large the best documentation out of anybody that I've ever worked with. It is incredibly easy to find the exact information that you're looking for. They have in-depth guides, they have code samples, and the code samples will insert certain variables that you need like straight from your account such as like your secret key which you need for authentication or your product ids uh, so you can actually set up these payment integrations and it is really just impressive how good their documentation is when evaluating a third party that is really something that you should take into consideration that and are there continuous product updates so for example we're on version 28 of the java uh, stripe package so there's continuous updates um, there's huge developer community support and it's just always going to be easy to find information on anything that you're trying to do and even with all that great support i would say the fees are definitely Definitely pretty manageable. There are fees. I mean, obviously they're going to charge you somehow. I forget what the exact numbers are. I think it's two point something percent plus like a flat fee uh, per transaction. So as a solo developer, obviously you're trying to minimize costs as much as possible. But for the amount of pain that Stripe simplifies in terms of payment processing, really that fee becomes negligible to me. Next, there's just a ton of customization that comes with these payment integrations. So you know, I'm able to change out things like uh, the images and logos on the payment form itself, uh, button colors. I'm able to add the features that a user will get if they actually purchase this thing. So I would definitely think the forms and the payment forms themselves have come a long way in that regard, which is awesome. Other types of customization include like different form types. So for example, I'm using the embedded form. It's actually just a component on my website. It doesn't have to redirect to a dot stripe 
uh, domain, which is really awesome. Everything just stays within my own website. Um, but you have that option if you want to. There are no code and low code solutions for any type of payment form that you're trying to create. And uh, all of that customization is just really powerful. Finally, there's also just a lot of customization when it comes to the types of products that you can create with Stripe. So for example, on my website, I have a one-time payment sitting right next to a monthly subscription and setting up both of those and having them in the same flow is really no problem. There's also tons of other options too, like usage-based pricing. And there are also some other options, which is really cool. Uh, so you can have anything that will match your use case. Moving on to some more things that I love about it. The testing features are immaculate. So there is a whole test mode that you can put your account in before you're ready to go live. This gives you a separate uh, testing token so you can test your entire payment flow uh, before it even hits production. This has been awesome for me and it's also gonna be really important when I do my beta. So for example, when you saw I was going through the uh, payment form and I entered in a test credit card number that Stripe supplies while your account is in test mode so you can actually you know, go through this all the scenarios that you could possibly do. You could even use uh, test credit cards that will fail so you can test all your failure scenarios as well. But like I said, I'm doing a beta coming up pretty soon, but I'll be able to have folks go through the entire onboarding process, including the payment step, uh, without them having to actually pay for anything, which is awesome. Finally, last thing that I wanna talk about is the uh, webhook capability that Stripe has. So I talked about this earlier when I was going through the diagram, but essentially I need to listen for when a customer has um, actually had a successful payment come through, and it is, off of that event that I'll be actually provisioning access to them so they can use the DinnerB platform. And so this is a really powerful feature. There are tons of different events that can take place throughout Stripe. And so you're just able to listen for these events as they come through your system. And then you can create endpoints on your own server that does whatever business logic you need to do in reaction to these events. And the testing for this is also pretty awesome. Uh, they just have a CLI where you're able to send out these test events and then that event can trigger your server um, and you can make sure that whatever is supposed to happen is happening. So all in all, Stripe as a solo founder is critical to my business. Honestly, I don't know how I would tackle payments if I didn't have Stripe. So shout out to y'all. And if you're building a software, definitely consider using Stripe in your next project. But yeah, that will wrap up this video. Like I said, I really hope you were able to take something away from this, whether it's some inspiration on how to do your own user onboarding, or just if you had some questions or comments, leave them down below. I would be more than happy to read them and respond. In terms of Dinnerbee, that is another huge thing that I'm able to cross off the list. And so really all that's left for me is to get this thing hosted. There are a couple of things that I have to make responsive uh, in terms of web design, making sure that they're actually looking good on mobile screens um, and just a few things here and there. But otherwise I'm getting very close to the MVP state uh, and then being able to launch my beta in a few weeks. So thanks a ton to everybody who has stuck around and, and watched all my devlog so far. I really do appreciate it. It means a ton to me. I'm really excited to get dinner be in y'all's hands as fast as possible. Definitely subscribe so you can see all the future product updates, things that I'm doing for the beta, for the launch, all the marketing and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, if you're interested in SaaS or in my journey in general, definitely subscribe and you'll be able to see all those updates in the near future. Thanks again for watching all the way through. I really do appreciate that. I hope you have a great rest of the day and I will see you in the next one.